Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline from Knitting House Square, and today I have another knitting tutorial for you. So, where this tutorial came from is on my hat knit flat video, which I'll link up there in the corner. One of the requests I got was to do a ski mask or a balaclava using that same knitting flat technique. And what I mean when I say knit flat, that means that rather than joining in the round where you work in a circle in knitting, what we do instead is we work row by row, turning our work and working back and forth. So you never have to join in the round. So what I'm gonna be taking you through today is all the steps you need to be able to create this project. So a couple of the features is knit from the bottom up to the top. Again, it is knit flat. So we start off down here at the bottom. We use a simple cast on method. Then the majority of this pattern is ribbing. So that's knit one, purl one and it creates a really nice and stretchy design. That way it can be adjusted or, and it really ends up fitting a lot of different sizes. So we work the ribbing up for a portion, then we're actually gonna cast off in the middle of a row. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how we do that. The following row, we're gonna cast back on again in the middle of a row. Then we work up through the top portion of the hat. Again, just regular ribbing. Work all of our decreases, bind off, and then lastly, I show you how I seam up all of my projects, which is with something called mattress stitch. So what it does is it creates a really nice hidden seam, right? So most people wouldn't ever know that this was actually knit flat and not knit in the round. So it's a pretty fun technique to learn. So on my mannequin here, I have the adult size. And then in the pattern down below, there is also a youth size as well. So two different options. This project is knit out of worsted weight yarn. So that was another request I had in my hat knit flat video. So worsted weight yarn, that's number four. And so what you're gonna find is first, if you click on that description box down below, you're gonna find each one of the video breakpoints. That way, if you're looking for just a specific step of the video, you can fast forward or rewind to that exact moment. You'll also find the link to the full PDF pattern, which is available on my website, and it is available in both of these sizes. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button down below. That way you stay up to date on all my new videos. Let's get started. One thing I wanted to mention about this design before we begin is the adjustability of the ski mask. So what's nice is this cast off that we're gonna do in the middle of a row is a really stretchy cast off. So what that allows you to do is you can pull it down below your chin or you can pull it up over your nose if you prefer it that way. It really does become really adjustable and customizable. Starting off first with the yarn I'm going to be using for this video. So I am using a worsted weight or a medium weight yarn. This is going to be the yarn that's kind of like in the most abundance at your local craft store, right? Places like Joann's, Michael's, things like that. What you're looking for on the label is number four. So this is the Joann's version. There's is called Big Twist Value. You can do like Red Heart Super Saver, a lot of those different ones. Those are all gonna be the medium weight or the number four yarn. And in total, to knit this adult size one right here, I used about 85 grams. Next up for the knitting needles, I'm gonna be using size US 7 knitting needles. And for this project, it is knit flat. So for that reason, you can use either straight knitting needles. And in that case, if you're using straight knitting needles, you want fairly long ones, right? So go for the longer size ones rather than the shorter ones. That way we're gonna have quite a few stitches, right? It's basically like double this. So they're really gonna bunch up on those straight knitting needles. What I actually like to do is I use a circular knitting needle and I knit flat on it. So what that means is I'm gonna cast on all my stitches and then I'm just gonna act as if these are two straight knitting needles and go back and forth across my work. I never actually join in the round. So that's what I'll be showing in this video. And I just have a fairly short cord on here. This is probably, I think this would make me about a 24 inch in total. In addition to the yarn and the knitting needles, you're also gonna need six stitch markers. Then I like to have one removable stitch marker that I use for my decreases to remind me which is the front or the back side of my work. So we can see this stitch marker opens up so I can just add it to a section of my work. You can also just use a piece of waste yarn and tie it on as well. A tapestry needle, a pair of scissors, and then a ruler to measure the lengths as you're knitting along. So the first thing I'm gonna be showing you in this video is a cast on technique that you can use. So the one I'm gonna be showing you is called the backward loop cast on. 
And this is a really quick and simple cast on method that does create a nice and stretchy edge. If you're more interested in trying a more advanced cast on method, I recommend something like the long tail cast on or the German twisted cast on. I do have a video comparing both of those methods that I'll be sure to link up here in the corner. So now when we do cast on, we want to cast on, I'm going to be knitting the adult, adult size that I'm showing you here. So this one is 92 stitches. The reason the number ends in a two is because essentially we want to have two extra stitches that we can seam onto the inside of our work. So when you're casting on, you want to make sure your number ends in two, right? So if you're scaling this up or down, you want to cast on something like 102 stitches, 82 stitches, 72 stitches. You want to make sure it ends in a two. That way all the decreases will work out perfectly. And then also you have those two extra stitches that you can use to seam. So for the size I'm knitting, which is this one right here, I'm going to be casting on 92 stitches. So I started off this video using this darker purple yarn, but I found that it was really hard to see on the camera. So now I'm just going to switch. This is the same exact yarn, just in this nice light blue color. So first up for the backward loop cast on, we have to create a slip knot. So the way I'm going to have my yarn positioned is I put my working yarn or the ball of yarn further away from me. And then the end of the yarn, which is called the tail closest to me. Now, the first thing I have to do is create a slip knot. So to do this, I'm going to take my left hand and I'm going to place it behind my tail. And I just have about six to eight inches laying here in the front. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab onto that tail with my bottom three fingers. And now I'm going to take that working yarn. Let me get a little bit out of there. And I'm going to take it up behind my finger, back behind down to the bottom, up the front to the top again, back behind down to the bottom, up the front to the top again, back behind down to the bottom. Now I'm going to grab onto that second strand with my bottom three fingers as well. So now when I look at my left finger, I'm holding on to both the tail and the working yarn. And this is essentially wrapped around my finger like two and a half times. So the way I create a slip knot is I'm going to rearrange these top two loops. So first I'm going to take the second loop and I'm going to move it up closer to the top of my finger. So it becomes the new first loop. Now I'm going to take that new second loop and now I'm going to move that one up closer to the top of my finger. So now I have a new first loop again. Now I'm going to take the second loop and I'm going to grab onto that one, slide it off of my pointer finger. Now I've created a slip knot. So for this slip knot, I'm going to hold the slip knot so that the tail is closest to me. Working yarn is furthest away. And now I'm going to take either one of my knitting needle points and I'm going to point the knitting needle towards the left, go right into that slip knot, take my tail and tighten it gently onto my knitting needle. So you don't want it so tight that it doesn't move around. You want it to still glide along your knitting needle. So that is our slip knot and that slip knot does count as the first stitch. So now next up, we need to continue casting on the stitches. So the way I'm going to do this is first, I'm going to hold on to the stitch I already have with the pointer finger of my right hand. Then I'm going to hold on to my tail with that right hand as well. The same time I'm holding on to the knitting needle. That way I don't accidentally start casting on with that tail. Now what I'm going to do is just like with the slip knot, I'm going to take my left hand and I'm going to go behind my working yarn. I'm going to grab onto that working yarn with my bottom three fingers. And now again, I'm going to move my pointer finger. So I'm going to take my pointer finger underneath that strand of yarn up the front to the top, back behind down to the bottom, up the front to the top again. So now my pointer finger and the knitting needle point are pretty close to each other. Now I'm going to take that knitting needle point. I'm going to go underneath that loop, slide the loop off of my pointer finger onto the knitting needle. And I'm just going to gently tighten it, right? I don't want them so close together and super tight. I want them to basically be loosely on that knitting needle. I can still slide them both around. So now if you haven't let go of your yarn yet, what you can do again is you can just loop your finger back behind down to the bottom, up the front to the top again, slide the topmost loop off of your pointer finger onto the knitting needle. Now, if you did let go of the piece of yarn, you just have to reset up again. So you're just going to take your left hand, go behind the working yarn, 
Grab onto it with your bottom three fingers, pointer finger down below, up the front to the top, back behind, down to the bottom, up the front to the top again. Now I'm going to slide that topmost loop off of the knitting needle, or sorry, off of my finger onto the knitting needle. Gently tighten it. Again, there's still plenty of space. These stitches can still move around. Now I didn't let go of the piece of yarn, so I'm going to go back behind, down to the bottom again, up the front to the top. Slide that topmost loop off of my pointer finger onto the knitting needle. And I'm going to keep on repeating this motion over and over again until I have a total of 92 stitches on my knitting needle. And again, that slip knot does count as the first stitch. If I ever let go, again, I can just reset up again and then keep on going. And when I look at my stitches, right, I can stretch them all out and there are little pieces of yarn in between each one of these, right? That's what's going to help give me that stretchy edge. They aren't tightened too close next to each other. Now I just finished casting on those stitches, so I'm just going to do a double count to make sure I have the right number. Okay, so I do have exactly my 92 stitches. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my work. So I'm going to take that knitting needle that I just finished casting off on, that's currently pointed towards the left, and I'm going to flip it so now that knitting needle is turned towards the right. And now I'm going to grab my second knitting needle point, right? So for me, it's attached. If you're using straight knitting needles, right, it would just be your other knitting needle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin working the pattern across this row. So starting off, we knit the first stitch. So now how we knit a stitch as a quick refresher is we're going to go into the base of that first stitch on what's called the left knitting needle. This one in my right hand is called the right knitting needle. I'm going to go into the base of that stitch going from left towards right underneath. Now I'm going to take my yarn, my working yarn, and I'm going to go back behind, then up in between the two knitting needles, pull that yarn snug, and I'm going to take my right knitting needle and pull that loop through the stitch. Now I need to slide that stitch off of my left knitting needle. So that was a knit. Now the first stitch is knit, and then the repeat begins. So the repeat is knit one, purl one all the way across until one stitch remains. So again, I need to knit the next stitch. So I'm going to take my right knitting needle point into the bottom base of the next stitch, going from left to right. Now I'm going to take my working yarn, go back behind, then up in between the two, pull it snug, then pull that loop through the stitch, slide the stitch off the left knitting needle. Now next up we have a purl stitch. So in order to work a purl stitch, I have to bring my working yarn to the front of my work. If I don't do this first, I'm going to end up with a yarn over, which is an extra stitch, and I don't want that. So to work a purl stitch, first I'm going to bring my working yarn in between my two knitting needles to the front. And now to purl, I'm going to take my right knitting needle into the base of the next stitch on my left knitting needle, going from right to left. I'm going to wrap my yarn around, so now I'm going to go up, then back behind, then towards the front again, pull that snug, and now I'm going to push that loop that I just wrapped around through the stitch. Slide that stitch off my left knitting needle. So that was a purl stitch. Now next up I have a knit stitch. To work a knit stitch, I need my working yarn to be in the back. So first I'm going to take my working yarn in between my two knitting needles to the back. I'm going to go into the base of the next stitch, into the front of it from left to right, wrap my yarn around, pull that loop through, slide the stitch off. 
Now I have a purl stitch. I need my working yarn to be in the front first. Gonna go into the base of the next stitch. We're going from right to left into the front. Wrap my yarn up, back behind, then down to the front. Push that loop through. Slide it off. Now we have a knit stitch again. Working yarn to the back. Go into the base from left to right. Wrap the yarn around, pull through, slide the stitch off. Purl, bring the yarn to the front. Knit, bring the yarn to the back. So I'm gonna continue this pattern of knit one, purl one, all the way across until I have one stitch remaining. And as I'm going to, I find it's helpful to kind of slide <laughs> these stitches up towards the knitting needle point. If you don't, sometimes you can end up with these long bars in between. So I just keep on sliding them all the way up towards my knitting needle points. Also, if you want to check your work as you're casting on, or if you ever forget what the last stitch you did was, you can look at the front of your work, right? So these are the ones I just did. And if we look right below the loop around the knitting needle at what the stitch looks like, you can tell what you did there. So let me find something to point with. <laughs> Okay, so let's say we were looking at this loop right here. Right below this loop, we have this bump in the front of our work. That was a purl. Then right next to it, we have the stitch on our knitting needle. Then there is no bump in the front of that one. So that one would be a knit stitch. Next one, there's a bump in the front. That would have been a purl stitch. So if I was trying to read my work all the way over until here, this one, I have a bump in front. That was a purl. This one, no bump, that was a knit. So now next up, I would have to work a purl. So now I just finished my last knit one, purl one, and I have one stitch remaining. So for the final stitch, I'm gonna purl it. Now again, since I just finished that row, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it, take my work and flip it. So now instead of my knitting needle pointing over towards the left, it's gonna be pointed over towards the right. Now I'm all ready to begin my next row. And my next row is exactly the same thing. So I'm gonna knit the first stitch. Then I'm gonna work the repeat of knit one, purl one, all the way across until one stitch remains. And make sure as you're doing each one, for a knit stitch, you're bringing your yarn to the back, purl stitch, you're bringing your yarn to the front. If after a few rows, you don't have the same number of stitches anymore, right? You should still have that exactly the same number of stitches you cast on. It's likely, likely because you ended up with a yarn over somewhere in the middle of a row. So I'm gonna continue all the way across until one stitch remains, doing knit one, purl one. Now again, I just finished a knit one, purl one, and I'm gonna purl my final stitch. Now I'm gonna turn my work and begin the next row, and the next row is exactly the same thing again. Knit the first stitch, then work knit one, purl one, all the way across till one stitch remains, purl the last stitch. So things you wanna watch out for is first, you wanna make sure, because of the pattern, right, you're knitting the first stitch and then you're doing knit one, purl one. So your first two stitches will be knit stitches. Same thing, or really the opposite thing with the end of the row, right, we're doing knit one, purl one, and then we're purling the final stitch. So these last two stitches will be purl stitches. Then as you continue working up, we're about to work for a long portion of just this repeat row, you wanna to check to make sure you're lining up each one of the stitches perfectly. Right, so again, you wanna look for if there's a bump in the front, right, this one right here would be a purl stitch. So you wanna make sure you're purling right above that. 
these ones on either side of it, those ones are both flat in the front, so those are gonna be knit stitches. So that way you can make sure that your ribbing stays perfectly aligned all the way up your work. And as you keep working up through the ribbing too, your hat, it looks really big when you first start casting on, I feel like, because of the cast on, right? We made it nice and stretchy. But as you keep on going, your ribbing's gonna tighten up a bit so that it begins to take more of like the stretchy ribbing form. So on here, what you're looking at is each one of these columns going all the way up, those are our knit stitch columns. Then in between it, those are our purl stitches, right? Knit, purl, knit, purl. That's what we're going for. So now we're gonna continue working that ribbing repeat row over and over again until we have six and a half inches. Once we reach six and a half inches, then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to do this really nice and stretchy cast off in the middle of a row. So again, six and a half inches, then I'll come back and show you this step. So now I've just finished working all the way up through the repeat portion of my hat, and I'm ready now to cast off some of the stitches to create the opening. So first up, I need to figure out exactly where to cast off the stitches. Basically how it works is we're gonna fold the hat in half, right, seam up this edge, so that seam is gonna be the back of the hat, and then we want the opening to be over here on the front of the hat. So in order to do that, I'm need, gonna need to cast off some of the stitches in the middle of a row. In total, I have 92 stitches for my hat. Now, two of those stitches are my end stitches, right? That's my first and last stitch that are gonna be part of the seam. So after I take those off, I have 90 stitches remaining. So if I drew this out, kind of going across a row, I have my two end stitches, and then in between those two, I have 90 stitches. So I like to cast off just under half of the number of stitches I have, right? So I have 90, half of that would be 45. So I'm actually gonna go for 40 stitches right in the middle. So if I cast off 40 stitches right in the middle, I have 50 stitches remaining, so I'm gonna have 25 stitches on one side, 25 stitches on the other side. So now when I look at this, right, first I'm gonna knit the first stitch, then I'm gonna work my repeat pattern for 25 stitches, right, knit one, purl one, all the way across for 25. Then I'm gonna cast off 40 stitches. Then again, I'm gonna go back to my pattern, then purl the final stitch. So that's where we actually get all the numbers from that are gonna be in the pattern down below. So when I begin this row, first up, I'm gonna knit the first stitch just as I typically would for the repeat. And now I'm gonna work that knit one, purl one repeat for 25 stitches. So now when I count across just to double check, I should have a total of 26 stitches that I've already worked. Okay, so that's exactly how many I have. Now next up, I need to cast off 40 stitches. So the cast off method I'm gonna show you creates a really stretchy cast off, and that's exactly what we're going for. If we look at the opening on this hat, this cast off is really stretchy and what that allows you to do is either pull it up if you want it higher over your nose or pull it down below your chin if you'd like a larger opening. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. So how this cast off method works is first, I'm gonna knit one stitch, then I'm gonna knit a second stitch. Now I'm gonna pass both of those stitches back over to my left knitting needle. And when I do that, I'm gonna put my left knitting needle into the front of both of those stitches. And now I'm gonna knit them together. Now the repeat begins. So I'm gonna knit the next stitch. Now I'm gonna take my left knitting needle, go into the front of both of those stitches knit them together. Now again, I'm gonna knit the next stitch, 
take my left knitting needle into the front base of both of those stitches, knit them together. So it's almost like I'm knitting them twice. So I'm going to continue across until I've cast off a total of 40 stitches. So now I've just finished casting off my center stitches, and I actually find the easiest way to confirm that I have cast off the correct number is to actually count from the left side over. So when I count from the left side over, I want to have a total of 26 stitches. So in total, I have 25 stitches over here, and then I have my 26th stitch is that remaining stitch from my last cast off. So you gotta make sure you count that one as well when you're counting the total number of stitches remaining. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue working across this row right in pattern. So my next stitch is gonna be a knit stitch. Then I purl one and knit one, purl one, all the way across until one stitch remains, purl the last stitch. Now I'm going to turn my work. Now on this row, what I want to do is first, I'm just going to work in pattern just as I have for all the repeat rows. So I'm going to knit the first stitch, then work knit one, purl one over and over again until I reach that last and final stitch there. Then I'm going to cast on the number of stitches I cast off. So in this case, it was 40. So I'm going to cast on 40 stitches in the middle of the row. Then I'm just going to go back to working in pattern for my second half of the stitches. So first, let me get over to where I'm going to cast on those stitches. So again, this is just the same as the regular repeat row. I'm going to knit one, then work knit one, purl one across. Now I need to cast on stitches. So the way I'm going to cast on stitches is I'm going to put my left hand behind where my working yarn is coming out of my work. Now I'm going to grab onto with my bottom three fingers. And I'm going to take my pointer finger, go down below that strand of yarn, up the front to the top, back behind down to the bottom, up the front to the top. Now I'm going to slide that loop off my pointer finger onto the knitting needle. So it's really similar to how we cast on those stitches with the backward loop cast on at the beginning. Right, so now I didn't let go of my yarn, so I'm just going to take my pointer finger again, go back behind down to the bottom, up the front to the top, slide the yarn off my pointer finger onto the knitting needle. And again, you want to make sure not to pull these too tight. Just pull them like slightly snug, but I still have room in there, right? They still slide around really easily. If you ever let go of your yarn, like I just did, right? Left hand behind the strand of yarn, grab onto it with your bottom three fingers, point your finger down below, up the front to the top, back behind down to the bottom, up the front to the top again, Slide it off your pointer finger onto the knitting needle. And now I'm going to keep on casting on until I've cast on the same number of stitches that I cast off, so 40. Okay, so now I have 40 stitches. So next up, I just need to continue knitting across the rest of the row. So I'm going to slide that remaining portion after the cast off up onto my left knitting needle. And now I want to continue in pattern so I can see that that first stitch has the bump on it. So that one's going to be a purl. I'm going to make sure my yarn's in front. So I'm going to purl that stitch. Yarn back, knit one, purl the next one, and I'm going to keep on going, knit one, Purl one until one stitch remains, purl the final stitch. Okay, so now that I finished the cast off, then on the next row, casting on again, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right back to that repeat row again. So I'm gonna work, knit one, then work knit one, purl one over and over again, all the way across. 
And I'm just going to continue the pattern all the way across these new stitches that I cast on so that they line up perfectly with the stitches right below. Turn my work and again work the exact same row. I'm going to continue working that over and over again until now this portion measures three inches. So from my new cast on edge to the bottom of my knitting needle, once that's three inches, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you these decreases at the top. Now, if you do think you're gonna need more space up here, you can even work this for a little bit longer than three inches. Again, that's gonna be up to personal preference. I found that for me, the three inch measurement works out really well. Now next up, I'm ready to begin my decreases across the top. So for this decrease setup row, what I have in front of me is I have six stitch markers and I'm gonna be placing these as I work across the row. So the way this row works is first, I'm gonna knit the first stitch. After that first knit stitch, I'm gonna place one stitch marker. Now I'm gonna work the knit one, purl one pattern for a total of 16 stitches. After working knit one, purl one for 16 stitches, I'm gonna bring my yarn to the back and now I'm gonna work my first decrease. So the decrease I'm about to work is called a slip slip knit. And what this creates is a left leaning decrease. So it's gonna turn these next two stitches into just one stitch. And this first column of knit stitches is essentially gonna end up on top of that column of purl stitches. So it's gonna lean over towards the left. The way this works is at first I'm gonna slip my first stitch on my left knitting needle as if I'm knitting it. So I'm gonna be twisting that stitch now I'm going to slip my next stitch on my left knitting needle as if to knit, again twisting it. Now I want to take my left knitting needle point and go into the front base of both of those and just slide them back over onto my left knitting needle. So all I've done so far is twisted those two stitches. Now I want to take my right knitting needle point and go into the back through both of them wrap my yarn around, kind of as if I was doing a regular knit stitch, pull that loop through, slide both those stitches off the left knitting needle. So now when I look at that decrease stitch, it looks like that column of knit stitches just continued right on up through there, and that purl stitch kind of ended up right behind it. So that is a slip slip knit, and that creates a left leaning decrease. After I work my slip slip knit, I'm gonna place my next stitch marker, and now I'm gonna begin the knit one, purl one, for the next 16 stitches. And again, next up, I'm gonna have a slip slip knit, so I'm gonna bring my yarn to the back, slip the first stitch as if to knit, slip the next stitch as if to knit, pass them both back over to my left knitting needle, and if you want to, rather than sliding out that back netting needle, you can just leave it right there in the back of your work and just put your left knitting needle into the front of both of those stitches, wrap your yarn around, pull through. And now when I look at that stitch, right, that column of knit stitches has just continued up. Place a stitch marker. And now I'm gonna continue working this repeat, right? Work knit one, purl one for a total of 16 stitches, then work a slip slip knit, all the way across the row. So you should end up with a knit stitch at the beginning, then five repeats of the pattern, then purl the final stitch. Now before I purl that last stitch, I'm gonna place a stitch marker, then purl it. So that was my decrease setup row. And now when I look at my work, I have my first knit stitch, then a stitch marker, first repeat, stitch marker, second stitch marker, and it keeps on going all the way across. So essentially I have my two edge stitches and then I have five repeats throughout the center. So now I'm gonna turn my work and now the actual kind of like pattern begins to form or the repeat of this pattern. So first on what's called the wrong side of our work, right? So this is kind of like the back side. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna knit the first stitch past my stitch marker, and now I'm gonna work a purl two together. So I need to bring my yarn to the front, 
Now to work up purl two together, I'm going to take my right knitting needle point into the base of the next two stitches, going from right to left through the front of those, right? Kind of like you're purling one, but now you want to purl both at the same time. Wrap my yarn around and push that loop through. So I just turn those two stitches into just one. Now I'm going to continue working in pattern all the way through the rest of the stitches before the next stitch marker. So next up I have purl one, yarn back, knit one, keep on working purl one, knit one. So now I'm purling that final stitch before the stitch marker, passing the stitch marker, and now I'm gonna repeat that exact same thing again. So I'm gonna work a purl two together, So I turn those two stitches in just one. Now next up I have a purl stitch, and now I'm gonna work in pattern all the way across, right? So next up, knit one, purl one, keep on going all the way over until the next stitch marker. So I'm gonna continue this in between each set of stitch markers, right? So right after each stitch marker, I'm gonna work a purl two together. Then I'm gonna work in the same ribbing pattern all for the rest of the stitches, slip the stitch marker, purl two together, keep on all going all the way across, then lastly, I'm just gonna purl that final stitch. So I just finished going across that purl side decrease row. So now I'm gonna turn my work. And now when I have this side of my work facing me that I'm about to knit across, this is the outside of my hat, or kind of like the front side, right? When I look at this one, this is the outside of my work. This is the inside of my work. So this side right here is going to be the outside of our hat. So what I'm going to do, just to remind myself that this one is the outside, is I'm just going to put a little stitch marker right on this side of my work to remind me that this is the outside. It also works well if you just tie a piece of yarn or something like that through one of the stitches. That works just as well. So when I'm on the outside of my work, I'm going to be working the decrease row that uses knit two togethers. So on this side, what we're going to do is we're going to knit the first stitch, pass the stitch marker, we're going to work in pattern all the way up until two stitches before the next stitch marker, and here we're going to work a knit two together. So let me zoom in and show you that one real quick. Again, so first, I'm just going to knit the first stitch, pass my stitch marker, now I'm going to work knit one, purl one, over and over again until two stitches remain before my stitch marker. Now next up, I'm gonna work what's called a knit two together. So a knit two together is a right leaning decrease. So first I'm gonna bring my yarn to the back. Now the way a knit two together works is instead of just going into one stitch as if I'm gonna knit it, I go into the base of the next two stitches at the same time knit wise, right? So I'm going into the base, going from left towards right underneath into the next two stitches on my left knitting needle, wrap my yarn around, Pull it snug, pull the loop through, slide both of those stitches off of my left knitting needle. So now I've just worked a knit two together. Now I'm gonna pass my stitch marker, and in between these two sets of stitch markers now, I'm gonna work that exact same thing. So I'm gonna work knit one, purl one, all the way across until two stitches remain, then work another knit two together. So let me show it one more time. So now I have two stitches remaining. My yarn is in the back of my work. Now I'm gonna go into the base of the next two stitches, knitwise, from left to right, wrap my yarn around, pull through, slide both of them off. And I'm gonna continue that same repeat for the next three sections, right, all the way across my row. Then I'm just gonna purl that final stitch. Now that I just finished that decrease row on the front side of my work, I'm gonna turn my work. And now again, I'm gonna work that purl side decrease row again. So here, right, I would knit the first stitch, then work a purl two together, work in pattern until the next stitch marker, purl two together, work in pattern, purl two together, keep on going all the way across. 
So these two rows of doing the purl two together right after the stitch marker and the knit two together right before each stitch marker on the opposite side, those are going to be our two decreased repeat rows that we're going to continue to work over and over again. And we're going to keep on working those over and over again until there's just one stitch remaining in between each set of stitch markers. Once there's just one stitch remaining in between each set of stitch markers, I'll come back and I'll show you the next step, which is where we're going to bind off those stitches and then seam up the side. So one of the most common questions I got on my hat knit flat video was why we work a slip slip knit first. And then after that, we begin working the knit two together. So right, why don't we just knit two together the whole time we're on the right side of our work? And that's a great question. So the reason that I do it differently the first time, and we work that slip slip knit, so you can actually see it right here. It's that first decrease that tilted over towards the left. Then after that, all of our decreases are going to go towards the right. So the reason I do the first one the opposite direction is because I'm trying to combine that knit and purl column together but I want all my decreases to appear as knit stitches, right? This whole column, I want it to be completely flat. So first I do a slip slip knit to get rid of that purl section. Then after that, I can just continue my knit stitches, right? Doing the knit two together each time, creating this really nice clean edge all the way up through the decreases. So that is why the first one on the right side of our work, or we have that slip slip knit at the beginning. Then after that, we just work knit two together. If I had worked a knit two together right here, I would have been putting that purl column in front of that knit column, which I wouldn't want. I just finished it going across that last decrease row. And so now when I turn my work, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off each one of these stitch markers and just pass the stitch from one knitting needle to the other. So I just want to put my knitting needle in purlwise to each stitch, slip it from one knitting needle to the other, take off my stitch marker, pass the next stitch, take off stitch marker, and keep going all the way across. Now I'm going to cut my yarn, and I actually seam from the opposite side, so I don't need too long of a tail here. I'm just going to leave about I always like to have extra, so about 10 inches. And I'm gonna take my tapestry needle, thread my tapestry needle with that tail, and now I'm gonna flip my work again. And now when I look at my work, the tail is coming out the opposite side, right? Usually when we start knitting across a row, the working yarn would be coming out this first stitch. Right now it should be coming out the opposite stitch or the furthest away stitch. That's exactly what we want. So now I'm going to take my tapestry needle and I'm going to slip each stitch off of my knitting needle onto the tapestry needle. Now I'm just going to thread it through so that they all end up on that piece of yarn. So now I have kind of done that like cast off, air quotes around that, <laughs> um, around the top portion of the hat. I can take off my tapestry needle and later on we'll weave in that end. So I don't need my knitting needle anymore. I'm just going to set that one to the side. All I need in front of me now is I need a tapestry needle, a pair of scissors, and then I also need a piece of yarn to sew with. So I like to attach a new piece of yarn and I always like to have extra. So I probably have about a yard here that I just wound off. I'm going to cut the piece and then thread my tapestry needle with that long piece of yarn. So now we can see when looking at my hat that this is the outside of my hat or kind of like the outer portion of the hat, right? That's when we have these nice decrease looking knit stitches going all the way up. They kind of curve around to the top point. This is the outside of the hat. Then on the inside, the decreases look different they look more like groups of purl stitches. So the way I'm gonna lay my hat down to begin seaming is I'm gonna take the outside or the part with my stitch marker and I'm gonna put that down on the table. Next up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold in the two sides. 
And I'm gonna begin seaming from this bottom and go up towards the point at the top. Now in terms of seaming, the most difficult part is just figuring out where exactly to pick up from either side so that it becomes essentially an invisible seam. So you might not even be able to tell where the seam is here. It's actually right in between those two is where my seam is. You can see it on the inside. So how I make this kind of like invisible seam is I use what's called mattress stitch. So mattress stitch works by picking up the bar that connects the first and second stitch on either side, right? So first I would pick up one bar on this side, then I'm gonna pick up one bar on the other side, one bar on this side, the other bar on this side, and I'm gonna keep on going upwards, picking up the corresponding bar. Now, what bar am I actually talking about here? So let's start over here on the left-hand side. So a lot of times knit work likes to curl over. So you just gently wanna like pull it out so there is no curling over. And now you can see that there's kind of like this edge stitch. So this edge stitch is gonna be this V portion that goes along this edge that does kind of like to curl over a bit. So all the way along that edge, that's our first stitch. Now if I kind of put my fingernail in there, put my fingernail on the other side and I pull it apart, you can see that there's gonna be those horizontal bars all the way along next to that column of knit stitches. So those are the bars I wanna pick up on this side. And again, I'm gonna start at a bar that's all the way down here at the bottom. So this side, it's actually a little bit easier to see because we have two columns of knit stitches right next to each other, right? When we were going across a row, we always knit the first stitch, then we knit one, purl one, all the way across, right? So in between those two columns of Vs, if you stretch it out, you can see the horizontal bars that connect those two knit stitches. That's what we wanna pick over there. So now let's look at the other side and what we're picking up over here. So over here, we always finish with a double purl, right? We had a purl one at the end of the knit one purl and repeat, and then we purled the final stitch. So over here, it's actually easiest if you look at first the column of knit stitches and then go over towards the left. So these two right here, we wanna leave intact, right? This one that's kind of like a U shape and then kind of like a rainbow shape, I guess I'll call it. Those two are part of that one last purl stitch that we wanna keep as part of that knit one purl one pattern. Then right next to those two, there's another U shape one. That's the bar that we wanna pick up, right? So look for that really crisp, upward shaping, kind of like a rainbow shape right there. Those ones we wanna keep and we wanna get the U shape that's right next to each one of those or right to the left of it. That's the bar we wanna pick up on this side. So first, let me join my yarn and to join my yarn, I'm just gonna pick one bar over here on my left-hand side. I actually usually go up one bar. So let's go up one bar and then just thread my new piece of yarn and make sure you don't pull it all the way. So I still have a little bit of a tail over here. Now I'm gonna go over to the other side of my work, stretch it out. And remember, I don't want this one. I don't want that one. I want the one that's right next to it. So now I'm gonna pick up that bar. Now I'm gonna go back over to the other side, pick up the next horizontal bar. Now I'm gonna go back over to the opposite side. I just picked up the one connected right here. So now I'm gonna go up one row, pick up the next one. And I'm gonna keep on alternating back and forth going one bar up each time. And you'll see that for these first few, I haven't pulled them tight yet. And that is totally fine. Usually I go for about an inch or so first and then I'm gonna pull it tight. Okay, so now I've gone for a little ways. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold on to the piece of yarn that's down here that's my little tail, right? I don't want it 
to pull out completely when I tighten these stitches. So I'm going to hold on to that. And now I'm going to gently pull on the piece of yarn that I'm sewing with. And it's going to tighten up that full seam, right? So now if I just looked at my work right there, you can barely tell that that's where my seam is. So now that I just worked a portion, again, my working yarns or my yarn that I'm sewing with right now is coming out over here on the left. So I'm just going to go back over to the right, pick up the next bar and keep on going for another small portion, then tighten it again. And I'm going to keep on doing this all the way up the hat. Now, if you ever feel like you've missed a few rows on one side or something like that, and now it's lopsided and there's more fabric on one side than there is on the other, all you want to do is you want to begin skipping one row on the side that you have more stitches on. That way it'll slowly even out again over time. That's what I found works the best for me. But now I'm going to continue sewing all the way up either side of the seam. And then lastly, I'll come back and I'll show you how I weave in my ends. So now I've just finished seaming all the way up that edge. And now I've threaded the tail to the inside of my hat. So I'm going to flip it inside out. Now that I'm at the inside of my hat, what's nice is that we do have the seam and we can actually use the seam to weave the ends into. So I do tie knots in my knitting. So to start off, let's say I'm weaving in the tail that I just seamed with. To start, I'm just going to take one of the loops of that seam and the seam is just going to be like the bulky region. Do a single knot. And now I'm just going to thread my tapestry needle up one of the columns of stitches. So I just kind of grab onto each stitch as I'm going along. And once I go up about an inch and a half to an inch or so, I'm going to turn my work the other way. And then I just go back in the other direction a few stitches. I'm going to cut that yarn so that one is all woven in. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing for the one that was at the top of my hat where I threaded those stitches off of my knitting needles. So here again, I am going to tie a knot. This one I think is more important just to make sure that top loop doesn't try and open up as all. And now I'm going to follow a column of stitches. Then turn my work the other way, go in the other direction. Now lastly, I'm just going to weave in these last two ends down here at the bottom. Thank you so much for joining me today for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below and also subscribe to my channel. That way you stay up to date on all my new videos. I'll see you next time.